This episode is sponsored by UPMC Altoona Elite Orthopedics in the UPMC Sports Medicine Concussion Program. UPMC Altoona Elite Orthopedics and the UPMC Sports Medicine Concussion Program are proud to support youth sports across our region and proud to sponsor the 2022 High School Football Preview on the Altoona Mirror YouTube channel. To learn more about their board-certified orthopedic surgeons, their specially trained concussion management experts, and the wide range of orthopedic conditions they treat, or to schedule an appointment in one of their facilities in Hollidaysburg, Evansburg, or Bedford, visit upmcaltuna.com backward slash ortho or call 814-889-3600. That's 814-889-3600. What is the West Branch Day line? Is it what Allport? Is it, is it, it Morristown? Yeah. Well, I mean, Morristown is the big town around there, but it's Allport. I mean, and I'm pretty sure Allport has a post office. Hey, I met Vin- Vincent's friend from St. Francis. She was from there. The first, she said she was a West Branch. The first thing I did, I went, Morristown or Allport? And I freaked her out. I think I freaked her <laughs> out. What'd she say? Uh, I think she just laughed and was like, didn't answer me. I bet Maybe you they're not allowed to up there. I bet you 98% of the kids that go to West Branch and the teachers and everybody else there would say, the school is in Allport. Oh, I don't know. It's one of those questions we'll never know. I know. Anyways. It's... Seven of the Elton Ramirez High School football show on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to try and not be too funny and clever because right away Mike's got a couple, what, six games here it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six games we got to get to. And real quick, you should know by now, but who I'm joined by is our two high school football guys. Mike Boydham on my right, Andy Stein on my left. And before we start, we do have, technically we have a towel. We have a central towel here. Uh, but you know, it doesn't mean that other schools out there still can't reach out to us. Uh, we'd like to thank the central people. Uh, Andy, who's our set decorator, will be putting this up, and this will be on uh, behind us on the show for next week. But uh, do we have a list of who hasn't sent us stuff? Do we do we care about oh, that yet? Oh boy, I mean, well, we, we might get to that later. Okay, yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, anyways, central people, thank you very much. I'll hang uh, we'll put that uh, up here. And you can watch that because that's what I don't want that to get dirty. Uh, Anyway, uh, let's talk about our first game right off the bat, El Tuna 4-2 at Chambersburg 2-4. and four. Uh, What do you know about Chambersburg? Because I like El Tuna, that's who I'm picking, but what do you know about Chambersburg? Well, they haven't won a league game yet. They uh, are a team that El Tuna's actually had success against in the mid-pen. Uh, the stat we put in the paper for Thursday was that El Tuna's actually 8-2 and two against Chambersburg. Uh, in the last 10 matchups, and Altoona doesn't have a record like that against many mid-pen teams. This is a big game for Altoona because, you know, you win this game, you lock up the at least you're going to be 500, get the fifth win of the season, and they need to bounce back after that game against Harrisburg. Yeah, you got, you got to think, too, Altoona is being told right now, we don't care that they're 2-4, and four. they're going to be a challenge yeah. for us. I imagine you've heard that from high school coaches Absolutely. your entire high school Absolutely. life. Absolutely, and I think, I think the lesson from last week is just throw it away and get back to work and you know, uh, see what you can do against uh, what seems to be a very winnable game for Altoona. And Altoona's been on the road, they went to Central Dauphiné, so they, they can't use that as an excuse, so hopefully their coach will have them focused because 
there's a playoff matchup coming down the end of the road there. Where I'm going to guess Mifflin County. The two of them will play each other, and the winner gets State College. If, if according to our rankings, we had in the paper the other day. So I'll be anxious to see how that turns out. Uh, the one game I'm also curious about, and Mike has on here, Oil City District Ten School, four and two at Hollisburg, one and five. Hollisburg uh, coming off their first win. Mike, tell everybody about this kid from Oil City. Well, his name is Ethan Knox. He's a junior, but uh, Homer wanted to make sure we knew, you know, Oil City, this is not the first guy that's had a lot of yards at Oil City. Yeah. And at Meadville, we had uh, Journey Brown a few years. Because yes. these District 10 running backs are just putting up major numbers. And you got to wonder, I mean, I'm sure that these guys are very talented, but is anybody playing defense in District 10? <laughs> is it the Big 12? Is District 10 the Big 12 of defense in football? I don't know, but uh, this guy... Ethan Knox, he's averaging 350 yards rushing per game. Per game. Um, 0.7. Yeah. 0.7, according and, to Mike's dad. And, uh, you know, that Meadville actually held him to 97 yards in the last game they played. So that was well below his average, and that's what Holidaysburg is hoping that they can do. Uh, the guy's made national headlines. I think he was the first running back to ever have 2,000 yards in just five games. He's been on ESPN, right? So, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a nice opportunity, I think, for Holidaysburg because, hey, everyone's expecting them to go out and give up a ton of yards rushing to this guy. They hold him to 80 yards and, you know, somehow win the game. That's huge for them. Is this as simple as... If you're, and you know Homer Delatre, yeah. just put eight in the box and say, I dare you to throw the ball. Because yeah, Oil City think, has never seemed to be an offense that threw the ball a lot. Right, and I, th I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, if they if they stack the box and see what they can do against this kid. Another note, that I was in Dubois at the time. I was working at the Dubois paper when Dubois and Meadville played that one game. At Meadville won 107-90. to You had that game? I, I didn't cover oh, it, but wow. I had to put the uh, box scoring paper the next day. And you should have seen that. It took up almost a whole column. That made Sports Illustrated again, too. It, it made ESPN. It well, was... Well, I'm curious. When you were at Mo Valley, was there ever a team you played where they had a kid that the numbers were that... I believe. Were you afraid, or were you almost like, "Come on"? I, I would say, that good. I would say the best running back I ever played against was Josh Kleinfelder from Bellwood, and uh, you know, obviously, the Bellwood kids remember him, and uh, he went on to have a great career at Lycoming. Lycoming, he's, he's, like, he's, he's the water. career. He is the career leading rusher yeah. at Lycoming. And yeah. John Hayes was a great coach, as we all know. He never ran inside the tackles with Kleinfelder because Kleinfelder already got met with me, but instead, <laughs> I never laid a hand on him. Okay, the Andy Stein portion of our show now is over until we come back to his Stein's line. Yeah, but uh, our next game, and talk about, I mean, Bedford. Jeez, Bedford just got done playing Penn Cambria. Now Bedford 5-1 and one at Richland 6-0. and uh, I'm looking forward to see how we pick this game, the, our staff. But if this were at Bedford, I think I would have taken Bedford. Uh, Mike, where do you see this game coming down to? Well, I actually did take Bedford because Ooh. I think that um, Bedford could have beaten Penn Cambria last year, last week. They looked really good. They just were hurt by three really t bad turnovers, including one that was a punt that may have just brushed off the punt returner, and Penn Cambria picks it up, gets a touchdown two plays later. Penn Cambria wins by seven points. So Bedford could be going into this game undefeated. They also had an opportunity where they almost had a pick six later in the game. And Bedford is like, uh, you know, they are able to run the ball really well. And Richland has had some tough games. I mean, they barely beat Forest Hills the first week of the season. Um, even when they played Johnstown, uh, it, it was it was like 23-7 to seven there for a while before they pulled away. I, I'm not saying Richland's down. But I'm saying maybe Richland isn't as dominant as they have been. And Bedford's kind of had their number over the past few years. And this could be a chance for Bedford to get right back into that Laurel Highlands chase. Now, I'm curious, too, just from your, like, I always like to ask you because I know you play. Yep. Richland's coming off a game where they did, they crushed Johnstown. Yep. Whereas, you know, Bedford's coming off a close game. Does that benefit or does Johnstown, maybe because Johnstown didn't give them much of a thing, you know, Richland's rested, or do you not yeah, see it like in, that? In that, in that sense, I, I think I would rather be in Bedford's case, just because. I mean, you know, that the last week was a major challenge for them, and I know I know they're probably chomping at the bit to get back out there this week. 
Um, so yeah, I I would always prefer to be in Bedford, even with a loss, even though we and we played a good team. It seems like you played well. You could have won the game. Um, yeah, I think I'd rather be in Bedford's position in that case. Yeah. Uh, our next game, and Mike had just mentioned him a little bit, at four stills, which I will say on record has to be the best two and four team in our area. But Bishop Guilfoyle four and two at Forest Hills, two and four. I mean, I know Wheeler's probably saying, you know, hey, we could take everybody seriously. Forest Hills, I got to imagine, he really means that with their two and four record. Yeah, and they've won their last two games by mercy roll. Yeah. Uh, so they're they're, they're turn, rested. They're, they're, they're turning rested. Thing, They're turning things around, and this is kind of what Forest Hills did last year. They built things up and got hot or late, and they rode it the whole way to the district championship game. Uh, the game this game last year went right down to the wire between BG and Forest Hills. Uh, BG won in the last few minutes, so. Forest Hills is going to want to try to get this one, uh, but I just am been impressed by BG. I mean, if you think about it, think about like Carson Keseywetter, Cooper Rother, how long these guys have played, how many varsity football games these guys have played. They've been starting for so many years now, and now they're halfway into their senior year. They're kind of super seniors, and Coach Wheeler said they're like coaches on the field. And uh, I think that's just got to be a major advantage against any high school team they play. Yeah, and now, too, as coaches always uh, preaching the whole, you know, don't take them lightly, don't take them lightly. Yeah. Do all, all high school kids listen to that? Or does some of them, like, come yeah, on, we're yeah, playing I, I Johnstown, they're wanting five. Not yeah. to pick on Johnstown, but kids, if they do read the papers, and I yeah. hope they do, they've got to see those scores, like when Somerset and Johnstown are getting beat. Does a BG kid see that Forest Hills record? Yeah, oh, they're two. And I, I think high school kids just see the record a lot of times, and uh, I think that's one thing they, you know, you really shouldn't do. I was part of that kid at one time, but I think Forest Hills is the uh, is the prime example of like your record isn't always indicative of how good you are, and and they they, you know, they uh, said that they did that last year when they what, took it all the way to the championship game. They entered the playoffs of what five and five. So. And yeah, and you could also say BG is like what. A couple plays away from being six and zero. Definitely. Yeah, because the Central game and the Penn Cambria game. And those are good teams. Those yeah. are three A teams. Yeah. Uh, our next game, Tyrone five and one at Clearfield five and one. Uh, and Mike had a great stat about this game in the paper earlier this week. I'm going to let Mike uh, pick that, uh, talk about that real quick. I'll say, I always pick Tyrone because he's my brother and he's a coach. But I also know, I think after a loss, I'd love to see what his record is after mm -hmm. losses, and I know he was not happy yeah. after that loss to Bald Eagle last week. That's why I took Tyrone. But anyways, uh, your interesting stat about the Clearfield in this series. Well, they've won nine in a row, and uh, Tyrone hasn't won since 2009 when they beat Clearfield 23-14. Uh, I just, Tyrone just always seemed to play Clearfield tough, but never be able to get over the hump. Like, where Central, when Central played Clearfield, it would always be close, and then somehow Central would get a win over Clearfield. I felt like uh, Clear, Clearfield's just had Tyrone's number, and I don't know how strong Clearfield is this year. I think maybe they're not as good as they've been in years past. But Tyrone really got a wake-up call last week oh, against Bald Eagle yeah. area. And the level of competition that Tyrone's going to have to play for the rest of the year is going to continue to be a lot tougher than what it played at the beginning of the year. So they're going to have to Turn really on. get a lot more out of the other guys. They're not just going to be able to lean on you know Ashton Walk throwing up to Ross Gamp for some touchdown passes. they really got to get that running game going. They haven't been able to run the ball for a couple of years down there. I'm curious as far as the because I know you live up near that area, but yeah. Clearfield, yeah, I was told Clearfield was gonna be there, but they're five and one, like a five and one. I, you know, I think a lot of high schools would kill to have a down year and be five one because the Billet kids out at Kent State yeah. and he's playing. Yeah, he's amazing. The kid from last year that played for Clear, Oliver Billet, he was their yeah. quarterback, DN, yeah. and he is in the rotation at defensive end at Kent State. But Andy, yeah. Andy was a heavyweight on the wrestling team. That's yeah, what, and Janoka is just—I mean, he's just a. Well, I mean, hey, Tim Janoko is a Moran guy, which is where I'm from. So, I mean, again, we're making this about Andy. I know, hey, again. you know. I mean, only the elite. That's what I always say. But I, I, um, I was talking about Clearfield uh, with a colleague uh, earlier this season. Um, yeah, he he did mention that Clearfield is much younger than they usually are, but still pretty talented, and looks like they're still going to have some bright years ahead of them. Um, and and they're still doing very well. I mean, they lost the first game of the season against Juniata, but they've won five in a row. Um, 
And like I said, I did pick Clearfield, but hey, Tyron, like like Mike said, Tyron got a big wake up call last weekend. But if they get their offense going, which they really need, um, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me all that all that much if Tyron did win, even though I did pick Clearfield. And I'll say this: even though Tyron gave up thirty one points last week, the Bald Eagle area, they still have our top defense in the Mirrors coverage area as far as points allowed. So, uh, and then our final game we'll talk about real quick. Because I'm going to ask Mike, because I'm looking at now and thinking, but should I think Penn's Manor? But Penn's Manor 6-0 and at Portage 4-2. Uh, how good is this Penn's Manor team? Well, Penn's Manor has opened some eyes, especially really dominating Northern Cambria, who beat Cambria Heights earlier in the yeah. year. It's a really interesting week in the Heritage Conference this week. So you got uh, Homer Center and Cambria Heights taking on each other. You got this game, Penn's Manor 6-0 and versus Portage 4-2, and and then West Shemokin versus Northern Cambria, and both teams are 4-2. and The top six teams are all playing each other. And this conference is still wide open. Uh, it Cambria Heights went undefeated in the conference and won it last year. Uh, next week, Penn's Manor plays at Cambria Heights. So there's actually going to be a story this week in the paper from John Hartsock about the Heritage Conference and how good some of these teams are and how they're all just its up for grabs right now. But this could be a huge game for Portage to get back in the mix. If they need this one because if they lose this, they're not going to win the Heritage Conference. But if they win this, get the tiebreaker against Penn's Manor, anything can happen. And we're going to still try to figure out how they lost. Portage lost that game too. Is it River? River? It's it no. It's it's the combination of Black Lake Valley and United. Yeah, United, United Valley. Valley. Yeah, I'll never. The high school kids, I, I won't be able to figure that out anyways. Uh, now we get to go to the fun part of the show. Mike's Stat of the Week. So we're going to do our Stat of the Week song that uh, uh, Daniel Eisenberg, our Spielberg of, of football show directors, is going to put in for us. What is our Stat of the Week, Michael? Well, so I said we were going to get back to it. Um, you know, we've gotten some towels this year, but we haven't gotten a ton of them. Now, I think that if I was a high school football team, I would send my towel to us because the teams that have sent us the towel have a combined record of 26 and 10. That's an awesome stat. That's amazing. That may be, Mike and I have been doing this show and I didn't know what he was doing because usually he's right. Since 2019, best stat of ever. What's, ever. Our, what's our record, you think? Uh, <laughs> Undefeated. <laughs> That's right. Never lost. That's right. Hey, we won an award. We won an award for that. But anyways, there you go. And do we want to say any of these schools, Mike, that haven't sent us out? Uh, I'm not going to call anybody out, but I'm just saying Look at the that. teams that have sent, they're 26 and 10. So I, I think that says something about the quality and how these teams are run. Uh, they know what they're doing, and they sent us towels. That's why they're winners. That's right. El Tuna hasn't sent us towels. I'll say I it. El Tuna hasn't sent us towels. I don't see... Portage. They're four and two. I they thought could Portage be five people loved us. I know yeah. Lance Hudak loves us. I know he doesn't do football, but I thought maybe Lance would have reached out. And, uh, I would have taken. Uh, hey. Do we have Central? Yeah, we're counting Central now. This towel made it in under our our Mike stat. Of, that's a great stat of the week. If that we'd ever do another stat of the week, that would be a great last that's stat of the week. One. Anyways, uh, now we got to do our favorite thing with the sound effects that Dan will put in here in a little bit. Stein's line. Short steps. Short steps are better than long steps. Okay, <clears throat> there are a few things to cover today on Stein's line. Uh, the number one thing is somebody once asked me, like, I don't know, it was about a week or two ago, Did you were you like a 100-yard sprinter at Mo, at Mo Valley? No. Spit Mo, take. Is this where I would do yeah. my spit take? Mo Valley doesn't even have a track team. I was a lineman. So anyway, the, the line of the week, and by the way, I really do love linemen. Uh, Northern Bedford, um, awesome job by those guys. It was a big game for those guys last week. Um, Connemont Township was undefeated just like them. They ended up demolishing them. Crush. Crush. 56-8. to eight. Unbelievable. 329 rushing yards for the week. Uh, those guys, the linemen, are Jake Bowser, Calvin Gokenauer. Hope I got that right. Uh, Brock Beach, Noah Baker, Brian Amick. Their tight end is Justin Fernandez. And Gary Black also told me uh, their tight end all year has been Nick Price. Unfortunately, he broke his collarbone last week. Uh, tough break for that kid. I want to wish him well as well. Uh, but good job to the Panthers. And the last thing I want to cover is 
you know, I, w- I know we make a lot of uh, Mo Valley references on the show. I'm from there and everything. Um, I'm the, also the Stein portion of the show again. We'll call <laughs> week seven was the This is Your Life, Andy Stein. Yeah, we <laughs> like him. We like him. That's, That's right. We get him. That's right. Uh, I also come from another small place called uh, Teal College. Uh, I played football there uh, up until this past Saturday. They had lost 41 straight games. Uh, it was an NCAA long, uh, as unfo- as unfortunate as that is to say, it was the longest point, uh, active losing streak. Uh, it got snapped last week. Uh, they beat Bethany College out of West Virginia, 27-26. Um, hey, I know this is a high school football show, but i got to take a minute to talk about that because I am just so head over heels happy for those guys, proud of those guys. Um, I've been talking to a lot of my football teammates over the last few days. We're, they feel the same way as I do. Um, you know, I'd be remiss to say, hey, I'm really proud to be a Tomcat today. Um, and this is where Dan will put in the theme song from Theo if we get Is it Theo or Teal? Teal, I always yeah. Say Theo. The H is silent. It's just, yeah, I'll never get that. Hey, uh, but hey, awesome job. And I, I have a feeling that Sam Bauman, their new head coach there, is. I think they got the right guy. So I'm, I'm so just so proud and so happy for those guys. There we go now. Thank you, Andy, for that portion of your show. That's Thanks, guys. Nice. Hopefully, Thanks hopefully some of our kids are being recruited to Teal. I that, hope that, so. That there was a Glendale kid. Come there talk was, to me. A couple of years ago, there was a Glendale kid. We used to yeah. get his stuff, and we put it in our college corner tidbits. That's how I knew where Teal was. Yeah. Teal, Teal. Come I still on. can't get it right. Come think on. of the color. Oh, like the Dolphins. Yeah, right? there you go. Wow. Oh, the Dolphins. Now oh, Scott is winning. Oh, now now I'm making it about me. Now, Anyways, maybe I'm Mike can talk about games. the Raiders. Well, maybe not. I wanna know what's the name of the game. I'm ready for some cool Anyways, you know, we're ready for some cool names here. So we're going to go to week oh. seven. And this talk, oh, hey, this one call. kid call. with oh. his Raider fan. And this is actually the Great kid's time. name was going to be on last week. And Mike made us bump it for Thor O'Ship. But this week from Everett, he's a senior. His name's Sid Grove. That is a great and the only thing I like about that, it sounds like a 1950s name. <laughs> if you're watching football, old, real, I real, think real football films, you'd say Sid Grove carries the ball forever. I think of Sid, Sid, from, Gro- Eaton, for Sid from Toy Story, and I also think of Sid Brain. And I think of China Grove from the Doobie Brothers song. <laughs> and then this one here, again, Bedford had Mercury Swain, which one. in the three years of, prior to this year was one of my favorite names of all time. Bedford has a freshman quarterback named Cross. Cassidy and Cross is spelled with a K. Cross one. Cassidy, and if he sticks with football and everything, I may just mention him every year because I think that just Cross Cassidy. But anyways, there's our two names. Oh look, Mike's phone call is over. Oh okay, thanks. Did I miss anything? It was it was somebody calling Mike. On is this when you wanted me to call so you could get up and walk away from the table? It's really so Sid Grove, Cross Cassidy uh, are cool names of the week. Uh, but for Mike Boyden and the star of our show, Andy Stein, this week. Uh, I'm Scott Franco. Uh, we want to thank our uh, camera button pusher, Nate, somebody from News, <laughs> I think. Dan will put his name across. I don't know how somebody is it S O M E B O D Y. But, anyways, for Nate, thanks for coming into the room here. Uh, I'm Scott Franco. We will see you guys next week.